Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy Adventure. In the last part we went through the Gaia Cave in the areas before it, and now we're gonna continue on. As I mentioned last part, I did some grinding on those werewolves there, getting to level 40. If you want the easiest way to do it, go up to this next screen and head right, you'll be right where they are. And if you're wondering what my stats are, this is them. And now we're gonna continue on. It's not, uh, too- we're not too far from our next destination. Anyway, as I mentioned in the last part, it has been about a couple of weeks since I last recorded a part before that. But I did manage to do some good stuff on my PS4 since then. Uh, I managed to beat all the games I have on it, actually, and by that I mean... The Last of Us Remastered, Final Fantasy Type-O, oh, great game, by the way. Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes, and Arkham Knights. All pretty good games, and Arkham Knight was especially fun, 100%. Though, thankfully, Riddler is still nowhere near as ridiculous as he was back in, uh, what's it called? City. I also finally found my own self a copy of Arch and 2, which is great. Anyway, we're buying a silver helmet here because it's, for some reason, not sold by Watts. Hmm. That always kind of made me, uh, made me figuratively, hmm. Yeah, my sentence structure is great, isn't it? That always made me think a little bit about why these people here have mithril equipment, essentially, but Watts doesn't have that one specific one. Anyway, that took me forever to realize. I know we've chopped down trees before, but that doesn't look like a path you would take normally. Bogard, by the way, is practically useless in battle. In fact, he's practically useless in general. All he does is just tell you, Oh, the Geminites did this and this back in the day. We were so awesome. Which, mind you, a lot of old men do that anyway, but still. You know, while I love this song, I do wish the overworld had at least one more theme to it, but I think it does later on, but I can't quite recall. Either way, we're at Julius's, uh... Airship, that's the word. Which is where Bogard told us to go. And I really don't like this song. It's good when you're playing the game, but when you have headphones on like I do right now, that really grates on your ears. Also, I forgot if I mentioned it at this point. As you see, I just hit that guy there. Technically speaking, all villagers actually have an HP bar. It's just obnoxiously high, like I think higher than the final bosses even. So if you do attack an enemy or a resident of any given town or even just any given NPC really enough, they will die. You don't get any experience from them though, so... It's just kind of a waste of time if you want to go on a murderous rampage. Ghosts here inflict the dark status. This is what it does. Pretty much for a limited amount of time, it turns the screen black, and it's pretty hard to see things else things considered, especially on the original Game Boy screen. Thankfully, all status ailments in the game are temporary. Though, my least favorite the one in the game is likely Moogle. We might see that later on, but I can pretty much explain it here. Uh, what Moogle is, essentially, you can't use your A or B buttons at all, and I think you have little to no defense as well. You just get turned into a Moogle and get to walk around until it wears off. And there is an item to cure yourself from it called the Moogle item. But here's the thing, since you can't use your B button items when you're in Moogle status, you can't use the Moogle item to cure yourself from it. So it's just kind of pointless that they put that in there. And maybe if it was like the one exception I would understand it, but... Ugh. It's kind of like being in a pig or frog status in Final Fantasy IV and being only able to really use the status, those uh, specific magics to cure yourself. Although, actually, I think that was just Pig, because right? I think you could use more magic under Toad status. It's been a while since I played 4, I should go back and do that soon. Anyway, uh, the airship is nothing really big at all. It's fairly linear compared to the previous few areas, too. Uh, I'll show it off in a moment, but just a note that to the north, there is an inn, technically, a free inn you can use. You don't have to go there, but it's there if you want to use it. Also, I really hate the status ailment music, because, ah, my ears. Ellie! Hurry, it's moving. This door is locked. How about the windows? Suicide's not the best option right now, Bogard. It may open. I'll get you from outside. Be careful. I'll stay in God Ellie. Okay. So, now we're partnerless. And we, for some reason, get to keep on hearing the uh, sound effect for the uh, propellers in those two rooms. I don't know why. Realistically speaking, we should be able to hear it at all times, and my god, that would get annoying. 
Anyway, I'm cutting back to a couple rooms before the in back to that fork we were just in that I had to go south at. Because, you know, time saving and all. These dungeons aren't very hard to get lost, I don't think it's there, so it doesn't take you that long. I think the eyeballs can flick you with some sort of status ailment, but I'm not sure what it is. Also, I forget what enemy it is, but an enemy this part, I know for a fact, can drop nothing. Like, it can drop a treasure chest, it's just that there's nothing in it. You know what, actually, I know what it is, actually. Uh, there's a certain enemy that drops an, an item called a fang, but I think you only need it for one specific thing, and then after you do that one specific thing, uh, it doesn't drop anything anymore. I'll get to that later on. Also, those, those two south forks in the previous two rooms, uh, they pretty much just loop around to each other. There's nothing there, really. You know, I'll just consider dark isn't that bad of a stay out of sailment, because all it does is really make enemies slightly harder to see. Because the big uh, problem with dark was the fact that you were on a backlit screen back in 1990, whatever. So, yeah. And I hesitate here because I try to remember if I have to go up or down. You have to go up, but I forget what's down there. I think it's just more enemies. Anyway, our next destination is that ladder right there, so we pretty much have to go around it in a giant ass circle. Why are they still having enemies drop candy at this point? That's kind of pointless. That's like, what? 5 HP? Mind you, technically you're not supposed to be as high level as I am, that's just me being overly safe, but, yeah. Yeah, that's one thing I actually have to say about this game when it comes to grinding. It doesn't feel like grinding more often than that, it just feels like slaying enemies, because there's no random battle transitions or loading times. So in reality, it just feels like you're just venturing around, killing enemies, trying to get some golden items. Hey, Ellie! Let's go! Keep this pendant, Alan. Give me the pendant. Oh, great. The, so, by give you the pendant, you mean die and I'll get the pendant later? Because that's what you just did. Hold on! I can't... I've survived farther falls than this! Ouch! Wow, somebody... came down from the sky! Alan? Do you know him? Alan! I know that voice, I think. Hey, it is Amanda! From part one, yeah, I remember her. I'm glad to see you again, my friend. I came back from Glaive after you left there. Oh, Alan. I'm sorry. But I have to... Ah, oh, great. Conveniently blocking out again. Where am I? Pendant! Where is it? I thought that it was Amanda talking to me. Yeah, that's a not very well structured sentence, isn't it? Anyway, welcome to the town of Menos, or Minos, however the hell you pronounce it. This is technically Amanda's hometown, and if you've talked to the people around here, this is actually where her brother is. Apparently, well, uh, near where her brother is. I'm buying the Windspear in here, by the way, which is pretty much just a longer range version of the sword's stab attack. And its charge attack is to throw it, very similarly to the battle axe. Apparently, if you talk to people around you, you'll learn that her brother is in the next town of Jad playing the harp for some reason. Nothing too important there, and I grinded three levels in the, with the nearby enemies. And when doing so, a lizard man in an area not too far from the west dropped a fang item. You are going to need that in order to progress, so if you're doing grinding, make sure you try and get that, because the desert area to the west of me right now is one of the best areas to grind at this point. Also, I have a shitload of gold, I just realized. I think just under a third of the maximum, unless it goes over one more space. I don't think it would, but it might. Anyway, we're looking for a very specific area around here. I'm not sure if this is required or not. I just have always done it because I've known about it, thanks to my, uh, cousin. Who was the one who introduced me to this game back in, like, 2004 through its remake, and then I just went back to the or original because it had the word Final Fantasy in it. Well, mind you, there's a variation of this in the remake, I believe. It's been years, so I don't quite remember. Either way, there's an egg here. Huh? Wow, it's moving! Togepi- or Chocobo. What are you? Hey, don't follow me. You think I'm your mother? 
Yeah, okay. Come with me. And the Chocobo's our next buddy. He's pretty much your best friend when it comes to navigating the overworld at this point, because when you ask him, you ride on top of him and he's really fast. And I gave us that to get back to that screen so I can head into the desert. I'm not sure if it's required or not, I've just always done it, as I said before. A lot of the- I think the scorpion enemy here can poison you, I'm never quite sure, because the wind lance, or spear, or whatever, just gives you to go enough distance to the point where you never really need to care. And I'm not even sure what the hell that dinosaur enemy is supposed to be. I could technically go onto the Final Fantasy wiki and just look at the names, but I'm not in the mood to. Anyway, these guys here are the lizard men. They dropped the fang, so make sure you get it. Uh, they're- they're- they're in- lo located here and in a couple screens south of me. Also, to the east, don't go there because that's an area filled with poison gas, and while you do get pushed back immediately, you still get temporarily poisoned, so, yeah. Anyway, this is Jad. Wait for me. Anyway, no, your audio wasn't failing. The town of Jad just has no music, so I'm going to be inserting a song. I have no idea what at this point. I'm probably going to make it hilarious, hopefully, to fill in the void. Not here, though, because there's actually music. This is Davius' castle. Davius is kind of like the dictator of this town. He's also apparently the son of a Medusa. And he also has the ability to change people into animals, apparently, if you talk to people around here. Better behave yourself in this town, Amanda. Oh yes, that girl. She went to the cave of Medusa. Nobody ever came back from there alive, though. Well, that's just pleasant, isn't it? But he has a pet pe parrot, so he must be a good guy, right? <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't keep a straight face to that. Jad, though, doesn't have much going for it overall anyway. Uh, there's an inn, an item, and a weapon shop, as usual, and the weapon shop does have some good equipment for us. But overall, nothing too much. Though, you're gonna want to talk to this kid. Uh, I fumble around here because I always forget which screen the kid's on. It's this kid right here. This is the kid that wants the fang. He'll tell us where the Cave of Oasis is, which is pretty much the Cave of Medusa. Also, a bag of fang, that just doesn't sound right. And the clue is palm trees and eight. That's pretty vague, but once we get to the right area, it makes sense. And I had to look around for the equipment shop, because it's kind of hard to find, all things considered. We're here for the gold armor, no, gold shield and the gold helmet, I believe? Yes, not the gold, not this golden armor yet, though. Because I think either I can find that in a dungeon later on, or it's just because I like the status protection of the shield more. I for, of the uh, armor more. I forget at this point. And now I'm out of Jad because, honestly, uh, so you didn't need to see me walking out of that place. It's pretty boring anyway. So let's look for that cave trees, uh, that, the palm trees in the aid, alright? Also, I should mention right now, in between parts, I will be level grinding up to level 35 just because I like going into dungeons with a close, as close as possible to an even level of 5. That's just the way I've always been with RPGs, though. Also, for some reason... Uh, the wind lance, when it's charged, if it hits a s uh, certain tiles, it actually gets completely dulled and won't do any damage to any enemies. I think it's because the hitbox gets destroyed by, like, the trees or something. I'm not entirely sure. Game Boy programming is interesting at times. Anyway, this is our idea. That is our light that looks like an 8, and there's these trees here which we have to walk around in a figure 8 formation. And that causes the cave to appear for some reason. Oh, hey, Amanda. Amanda, did you take the pendant? Why? I'm sorry, I had to bring it to Davius. That pendant was to exchange for my brother, but... Davius cursed him and turned him into a parrot, so that's what that parrot was. I must get the Tears of Medusa to uncurse him. Amanda, I'll help you. Thank you. But with that, I'm gonna need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 5, we'll be checking out the Cave of Medusa. See you guys then.